Welcome to this month's edition of Focus on Health. I'm your host, Dr. Barbara Brookmeyer, and today we'll be talking about what Frederick County is doing to celebrate National Children's Dental Health Month. And we have a special guest with us, uh, Jennifer Arnold. She's a registered dental hygienist working with the Frederick County Health Department. Uh, at the Health Department, we serve over 2,000 children a year, providing comprehensive dental services for children who have Medicaid insurance or are uninsured. And um, in response to the local health improvement plan, where one of the top priorities for improvement in Frederick County was access to dental services, the Health Department, in collaboration with other partners, including the school-based health center in Frederick County Public Schools, identified several schools where there were increased numbers of children who didn't have dental insurance. And what Jennifer is currently doing is she is going out to those schools and providing uh, education, oral screenings, and then also fluoride varnish to um, children who have permission for that. And so I'm really excited for Jennifer to be here to talk to us about what she's doing. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you Thank for you. joining us. Thank you for having me. So is it true that cavities is the number one preventable disease in children? Yes, it is true. It's five times more common than asthma and seven times more common than hay fever. Fifty million school hours are lost a year due to dental-related um, illnesses. Wow. So, uh, boy, I guess, should we start with the dentist? So when should parents take their child to the dentist for the first time? They should take them as early as they see the first tooth come in the mouth and at least no later than their first birthday. But if you haven't taken them by their first birthday, it's not too late. Go ahead and call and make the appointment. On the first visit, what they usually do if the child is one and under, we do a knee-to-knee -knee exam. Um, the parent and the dentist's knees would touch. The parent takes the child and wraps their legs around their waist, so they're almost like hugging the child. Then you gently lay them down so that the child's head is in the dentist or hygienist um, lap. That way you can visually see a lot better in there, and you can go over brushing and um, oral health with the patient and the, um, the parent. But if the kid starts crying, it's, it's still okay because you can see better and you know that they're comforted, the parent's there with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what can parents do outside of the dentist's office to help prevent cavities? Make sure that their child is brushing their teeth twice a day and flossing. And um, also, you got to make sure that they're eating the right fruits and vegetables and cutting down on the sugar and the carbohydrate consumptions because carbohydrates do break down into sugars and a lot of the kids are doing a lot of sugars and carbohydrates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you mentioned the brushing and the flossing, should parents or up to what age should parents make sure that they're still assisting their children in doing that? Up to the age of 10, um, they don't have the dexterity, the ability to remove and to get back to the back molars to remove the um, food debris and plaque and also assisting and flossing with them. Now if the child has a handicap, you may be even doing it longer. Mm -hmm. uh, what else can parents do to help promote good oral health? They can um, make sure that they are their child is eating a, a good healthy diet for one, cutting out the sugars, especially the sodas and the juices. And also, um, you can introduce a fluoridated toothpaste. By the time the child is about four, you wanna make sure that they're able to spit um, really well and you, they still wanna be supervised. And then you can also add the fluoride rinses by the age of six, but you do wanna supervise them mm -hmm. at this time. Well, what about fluoride treatments in the dentist's office? Are they a good idea? Yes, they are, at least every six months. For someone that's high risk, they might even want to do it every three months if they've had a lot of cavities. But you can get fluoride treatments done in the dental office. They have dental clinics. There's the outreach program that you were saying that they do it in schools. Um, it comes in many forms. The fluoride can be in a form of gels, um, foams, or even the fluoride varnish. The fluoride varnish is probably the most popular ones because the kids are more compliant with it. It's very easily to apply. You just kind of open the pack, get a little paintbrush, paint it on. The teeth are a little bit sticky, but they can eat and drink right away, so the kids love that. Oh, right. So that sounds like a very good one. Yeah. Um, so mm, what does fluoride do? Because I've heard parents, uh, well, I think when I've asked parents or we've been talking about it, many of them really aren't quite sure what fluoride does and some people have heard some things that they uh, maybe have misunderstood uh, about being associated with the fluoride. So could you talk a little bit about what fluoride does for the teeth and why it's so important? The fluoride actually remineralizes the tooth. If you have an area that's starting to become a cavity that's not quite a cavity yet, it will actually remineralize and make that tooth hard if they start keeping that tooth clean. It also has an antibacterial effect. But, um, in the, and if you are on well water, you might want to make sure that you're using a fluoride supplement, which you would get through your pediatrician or your doctor, or making sure that you're drinking water that's fluoridated because that is going to help the teeth that are developing that aren't quite in the mouth yet. Mm -hmm. 
Can you talk about what some of the things other people in the community might be doing to help promote good oral health? Um, the Frederick County Health Department, along with the school-based health center, are working together to build a oral um, health screening in a fluoride varnish program with um, three local schools. It's Waverly, Hillcrest, and um, Lincoln. And also the Frederick County Health Department has a dental clinic that sees children up to the age of 18. They have a um, sliding fee scale for people that uh, don't have an insurance. And they also um, take medical assistance. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. And so before we end, uh, what are the take home messages if you would say, what can parents do today to help improve the oral health of their children? Definitely um, getting them into a regular dentist every six months to catch things early so nothing gets um, too out of hand. And um, assisting their brushing and helping them floss. Um, they really don't have that ability until age 10, so you have to be helping them out. They may look like they can do it, but really they can't. And um, you just have to let them brush first and kind of go back over them. And if you don't have fluoridated water, if you are on a well, you may want to talk to your pediatrician or dentist about fluoride supplements. Well, very good. Thanks for all those really good tips. And uh, I expect that uh, we'll see an improvement in children's oral health as a result of people listening to what you had to share today. I hope so, and thank you for having me today. And now please stay tuned for this month's Medical Myth. Frederick County Workforce Services and its partners are proud to support Frederick Works, One Job at a Time, an employer hiring initiative that encourages Frederick County businesses to create or fill at least one new job to boost our local economy. So far, the initiative has tracked over 1,500 jobs. There's no cost for employers to participate, and the benefits of joining include positive community recognition and free publicity. Visit www.frederickworks.com slash one job for more information. So I got this new family and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy. Oh, and she even talks to it. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. And now here's this month's Medical Myths. Welcome back to this month's Medical Myths. This month's Medical Myths is about heart disease and women. The first myth is that more men than women die from heart disease. Well, that is false. While men do tend to develop heart disease earlier in life than women, after menopause, women catch up. In Frederick County in 2010, slightly more women than men died from heart disease. The second myth is that cancer kills more women than heart disease. Well, heart disease flip-flops with cancer every couple of years as the number one killer of women in Frederick County. And that's comparing deaths from all types of cancer combined to heart disease. The third myth is that if you think you're having a heart attack, you should sit down and see if it goes away or you should try coughing. That could be a life-threatening mistake. If you think you're having a heart attack, you should dial 911 immediately rather than waiting to see if you feel better. Emergency medical services personnel are equipped to treat or resuscitate you if your heart stops en route. And studies have shown that heart attack patients generally receive faster treatment when they're transported by ambulance and the hospital is anticipating their arrival. The fourth myth is that if you don't feel chest pain, you can't have a heart attack. That is false. Although the most common sign of a heart attack is chest pain or discomfort, it's not always one of the symptoms. It is especially important for women to know that other symptoms might include shortness of breath, nausea, sweating, feeling lightheaded, and or pain or discomfort in other parts of the body, such as the back, stomach, neck, or jaw. Men and women alike can experience the Hollywood-style heart attack with severe chest pain, cold sweat, but women, more often than men, have subtler, less recognizable symptoms, such as abdominal pain, achiness in the jaw or back, nausea, and shortness of breath. 
And another common symptom is unusual tiredness. It's that uncanny fe uh, feeling of fatigue that a woman just can't put her finger on. And too often, women tend to blow off those symptoms. And they might even mistake it for indigestion or a sign of being out of shape. And that mistaking of the symptoms can be deadly. The final myth for today is that heart disease doesn't affect those who are fit and strong. That's false. Staying fit and active does improve heart health, but doctors can cite many cases in which even the healthiest habits are not enough. Exercise does afford benefits, and fitness reduces the potency of risk factors, but it doesn't eliminate them completely. You can perhaps run marathons, but you still have to have your cholesterol checked and your blood pressure, and you still can't smoke. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 40% of Americans are at risk for heart disease because of inactivity, 40% due to inactivity. Um, the percentages of U.S. adults with other key risk factors are obesity at 34% of the population, high blood pressure, 31%, uh, cigarette smoking, 21%, high cholesterol, 16%, and diabetes, 10%. But remember, 40% of the population is at risk for heart disease due to inactivity alone. So make sure you get your blood pressure and cholesterol checked regularly and follow Angie Blair's health tips related to vigorous exercise and healthy eating. That's this month's Medical Myths. And now here's Angie Blair with this month's health tip. Hello, this is Angie Blair, health educator with the Frederick County Health Department. This month's health tip is brought to you by the Frederick County Children's Dental Program. February is Children's Dental Health Month. Did you know that tooth decay, otherwise known as cavities, is the most common chronic disease found in children? It is five times as common as asthma and seven times as common as hay fever. Untreated tooth decay causes pain and infections that may lead to problems with eating, speaking, playing, and learning. When a baby's tooth is lost too early, the permanent teeth can drift into the empty space and make it difficult for other adult teeth to find room when they come in. This can make teeth crooked or crowded. That's why starting infants off with good oral care can help protect their teeth for decades to come. The following are a few tips for, for preventing tooth decay in children. Clean your baby's gums before teeth come in. Once teeth come in, brush with fluoride toothpaste twice a day, every day, especially before bed. Schedule your child's first dental visit when his or her first tooth appears or by the first birthday. Do not lay your baby down with a bottle at nap time or at night. Give your child milk or water. Do not give your child drinks with added sugar, such as soda, juice, or punch. Do not share food, spoons, or forks. If you put food or eating utensils in your mouth, do not put them in your child's mouth to avoid avoid spreading germs that can cause cavities. Talk to your child's dentist about dental sealants when your child's first adult molars start to come in. Here at the Frederick County Health Department, children with medical assistance or without insurance can see a dentist and dental hygienist to ensure good care for their teeth. For more information about giving your child a healthy mouth for life, visit HealthyTeethHealthyKids.org. For a dental appointment for your child, call your dentist or the Frederick County Children's Dental Program at 301-600-1041. Thank you for tuning in to this month's health tip. And thank you for joining us for this month's edition of Focus on Health. Please join us next month.